I think the best test of any food item, everyone say it's fresh and out of the oven, that tastes, best test, the best test is how does it taste the next day as a leftover, so here we go. This is day two of Sean, Sean's Philly steak sandwich. Uh, mind you, the Minio's South hood was enjoyed for two days after its arrival. Here we go. Let's go. Hit the cheese hard. The roll is delicious. Um, I just licked off someone's thumbprint of ranch, maybe. I don't know, maybe it's mine. On the bottom of the bun. All right, so let's bite one. Bite two. Just sat down into here. Just got through this passageway. Right about here. So the first couple bites finally made it down into here. Bread's good. I like the bread. What's cool about, about the roll, I'm, I'm just sensing now, what's cool about the roll, I had some time on the grill. Love this. The bread, nice, soft, and fluffy here. But just as you're sinking into the, the core of the sandwich, you cut through this crustiness. Oh, it's a great journey from the from the top of the bite into the core when you hit that epidural layer of dough. Another good thing, you want to see stuff squirting out of the bottom. Right? That little dangling chad. Those dangling chads on a sandwich are a sign that you're uh, getting your money's worth, I think. I'm not sure of Sean's price point. We'll have to learn that. It's a great sized sandwich. Um, and, and that's good. I mean, it's, it doesn't have to be packed like my suitcase when I left for college. It doesn't have to be overstuffed. I think Sean has an affinity for this, but a nice, a nice dousing of ranch dressing. Seem to get a lot of ranch dressing on Pregabon dishes. Well, the cheese is good. Caramelized onions across the top, and the uh, steak is uh, the steak is nice, thinly cut. Don't have to tear through. I hate those. I hate those steak sandwiches where you gotta like tear through. This just uh, the steak just comes nicely with your bite. There is something that I just got into toward the back half of the sandwich that tastes like some jalapenos. Is there a jalapeno in here? Oh, all right. I'll accept it. Not a huge fan of hot. That's just me. It's causing some sweat coming up here. I can feel it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get through it, bro. Because I'm at the bottom third of the sandwich, and the jalapenos, for whatever reason. Um, we're on the back, we're on the back side of this thing. So just come into my taste buds now. And uh, yeah, so they're probably tasty. I'm just not a spicy guy. Hate gambling, hate spices, hate prostitutes. That order. Might need a second one. Might need a second one to be sure that I enjoyed it as much as this one, you know I think? Mean? Anyone can get lucky once, right? Tom Brady got lucky once. Well, it was more than once, but you know what I mean. So anyone can get lucky once, including sandwich makers. So my thought is a second Pittsburgh cheesesteak would help me understand that this is just quality from start to finish of that bun, or if the chef just got lucky because it was his day, he just got laid last night. So, but the one cool thing to finish up on the sandwich, I think any good food item, whether it's a donut, french fries, the, uh, the funnel cake at a fair, you wanna make sure that there's residue to have at the end. And somehow, some way, the delivery of the product should allow you to enjoy the remnants of the product. So, Sean's sandwich comes with a nice piece of tin foil, gives you a nice chance. All the ingredients of the sub around here, I see some bread, I see some onion, um, I see a little uh, little jizz of ranch here. 
So everything's here, and it's tinfoil presentation. Just gives, gives me a nice chance. No different than the excess peanuts on a peanut donut. The little piece of pepperoni that falls off in the box in your pepperoni pizza. But the ability to enjoy the last bits of a food item is the pleasure of any man's meal. Am I wrong?